What up, Internet? Uh, today we're back with the Atari 2600 or VCS, if you prefer. Um, last we spoke, the, I had to clean up the games and clean up the paddle controllers. I've done that. I've not done the joysticks yet because, well, you know, life gets in the way. Um, so today I thought, well, let's have a look at a couple of the games and just have a bit of a chat about them. So first up, we're going to look at a fellow. Not a game that gets talked about much because, well, you know, a fellow is not that interesting. It's not, you know, shooting up asteroids or destroying space invaders. Uh, the other game I want to talk about is 3D Tic-Tac-Toe. Once again, not a game that particularly gets talked about because, well, uh, I'll be fair, it's not the most exciting game in the world. But there are some very interesting things to learn about these two games, and we'll get to it right after the break. Don't you dare buy a video game until you've seen the Atari 2600. Buy one now and not only do you get the best video game ever, you also get three smash hits worth $170 absolutely free. Missile Command, Asteroids, Berserk, plus Space Invaders. All free with the Atari 2600. $170 worth of Atari games free? Oh, but it's only until the end of December, Dad. So buy your Atari now. Atari. 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 And we're back. All right, well, let's start off by talking about a fellow. So we'll plug it in. Oh, yeah, firm fit. Let's turn it on, make sure everything works. That looks like a fellow to me. All right, so I don't particularly know how to play a fellow or what a fellow is even about. So let's switch over to my web browser, so we can learn about it. All right, so it's a board game. Uh, programmers Ed Log and Carol Shaw. Uh, that's interesting. So obviously, quite a lot to read, which to be frank, I'm not gonna bother to do, but probably the most interesting part is Carol Shaw. So Carol Shaw was one of, one of the first um, female computer programmers. In her day, she was never credited, as was the style at the time. So Atari didn't credit their programmers in the games, in the manuals, artwork, nothing. Um, they claim it was because they were afraid that people were going to poach their programmers. Um, obviously, a lot of the programmers got very upset with never being credited, and you know, if they made a game that made Atari millions of dollars, they would still only get their you know, $10,000 a year or whatever it was at the time. Um, that's why a lot of them ended up going off to form Activision. So Carol worked on Othello and 3D Tic-Tac-Toe. So Othello was a co-programming gig with, um, she did with Ed Log, obviously. 3D Tic-Tac-Toe was the first game that she did completely by herself. She did a lot of other things too. Um, she was credited as one of the less publicised superstars of Atari. Uh, to one of her co-workers once said that Carol Shaw was simply the best programmer of the 6502 and probably one of the best programmers, period. So in particular, she did the 2600 kernels, which is that tricky bit that actually gets the picture on the screen. So even if she didn't work directly on a game, she most likely had her fingers in the pie, as it were, you know, doing the tricky stuff because the VCS doesn't have any hardware for drawing sprites or drawing the screen. You had to cram all that information into your game. So like a modern computer, um, you've got Windows. So Windows will take care of the hard part of like, you know, drawing an image on the screen. You just have to tell it what you wanted to draw. With the 2600, you had to <laughs> essentially you had to write windows and then write your game on top of that so she did the writing windows part for a lot of games uh, that that's an, an inaccurate analogy but a simple enough one that people can understand i hope 
Uh, what else did you do? She did Video Checkers, Super Breakout, River Raid, uh, all for the 2600. Well, River Raid was when she was working at Activision because it's an Activision game. Uh, Ed Log was uh, famous from a lot of the arcade games he worked on. So, a fellow. That's a big manual. Let's have a look. Okay, gameplay and objective. Uh, field is made of a grid containing 64 squares. Each player is going to color, white or black, and takes turns trying to capture as many squares as possible. He uses a joystick. Well, all right. That all sounds great. Let's see what I can do. So, uh, oh, yep, yeah, okay. So I'm going. I'm assuming it's like, a bit like Chinese checkers where I have to jump my opponent, but I think I am playing a game against a person. So that's game two. You know what would be good? If I looked at the manual. And yeah, so that's pretty much how it works. All right. If it's in the A position, the switch calls the game to go into setup mode. Ah, okay. Put the left difficulty position in B4. Play mode. Okay. Game one is beginner. So we're in that mode. And then if I switch that down, game should start, right? Oh, no. Reset. Okay. All right, so I should capture that one. Yeah, you can goals. Okay. Interesting, you can do it diagonally. I didn't realize that. That should get me two. Okay. So if I go... There, I captured two. Or do I do make a tactical move and go? Ah, okay. So I have to capture something. All right, that makes sense. Let's capture those two. No idea if I'm doing good or not, but hey, can't hurt. If I capture those two, why not? All right. Well, I can capture these two on the diagonal. Oh, you cheeky bugger. Ah, so you want the corner bits because they would provide... You know, you can't be outflanked once you get to the edge of the screen. Wow, I'm likely to lose. But it's the first time I've played it, so, you know, I think I can be forgiven. Looks like a good move. I reckon that one. Uh, maybe not. And if I take that one, I'll get a couple. I feel like I don't want him to have runaway success over here. Hmm, interesting. Now, does it need to be right next to this one? I guess it does. These are all things I would know if I had ever read the manual, but you know, we're not going to do that around here. What would be a good one? Now oh, that one gets me a couple. Hmm. Uh, I can't do that. Can do that. Ow. 
That hurt. Well, that one's right at the edge, so you can't do anything about that. I get the feeling, just the feeling, I'm getting beaten. Yes, beaten by <laughs> probably the worst variant of the 6502 processor. But, you know, good to know that Carol and Ed, they've done a very good job that they can beat some one who's never played a fellow before. Um, okay, well, that's a good spot to pick. I think this diagonal one over here. That seemed like a reasonable. Oh, you cheeky, cheeky monkey. Yes. Blanks out. Oh, okay. Interesting move. Oh, I am actually winning at the moment. Good thing it's on beginner. Otherwise, I think I would be getting uh, my bum handed to me. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah I can't take bits is already taken but if I take that one does that help me in any way let's find out all right so if I go there that gets me a couple He's shifty. He's a shifty one, this old Atari. Oh god. <laughs> I'm getting caned now. Um, that really doesn't help me much, does it? That one. Maybe it won't help me. Nope, can't do that. I really, really... If I do that, he captures me. Uh, I don't think I can do that. Nope. I don't have many good moves. Well, let's hurry up and end my misery. I've got a whole bunch of not great moves. Um, that one. Uh, no, that's what I can do there. If I take that one, it really doesn't mean much, but hey. All right, this is that one. This one gives me a few. But now he gets a whole lot. All right. Ah, uh, don't really have too many good choices. So let's just take that one. Say that one. And leaves me with one move, which I think does not make a great deal of difference. Well, the computer won 34 to 30 on beginning beginner mode. Um, 
Alas, I lost. But good to know that someone who's credited as being one of the smartest programmers for the Atari 2600 beat me. So, you know, let's uh, all remember that. <laughs> okay, well, let's try out 3D Tic Tac Toe, which was Carol's first game by herself. Oh, it's very blue. Okay, so 3D Tic-Tac-Toe. It is a game. At least it doesn't have a particularly long manual. Um, okay, let's start at the beginning. Uh, introduction. Well, I get the idea of Tic-Tac-Toe and it's in three dimensions. You must place four markers in a row, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Each game number one to eight is progressively hard skill level. Game nine is for two players. Okay. To begin play, switch on. Uh, shows four square balls. Number one will appear in the corner. The right number one is the number of players. Yep, yep. So let's get two tall. Press game just we're going to a new game. Okay, so let's start it by hitting the game reset. Okay, that was my turn first. I will put my marker there on the screen blanks. That's because it's using all the processing power of the Atari to uh, determine its move. And um, I can't display anything while it's thinking. That's cool. Okay, so I suppose I've moved there. There we go. Ah, you can't beat me, Atari. Was the Atari smart enough to stop me? Well, yes, it is. But now I have an X everywhere. Hmm. Bit of a dud move. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, part of me wonders, can you go diagonal? Oh, sneaky. Okay. So... I put an X there. Does that mean I am well obviously I put one at the bottom. Oh, I didn't see that. Damn you, Carol. You beat me. But yeah, okay, so that's just a little introduction to Carol Shaw and the games I have that she programmed for the Atari VCS. So really quite interesting. Um for anyone wondering, the Method I use for cleaning is I get a bit of, well, can't do it because you need the thing, um, contact cleaner, expose the contacts on the cartridge and wipe it down just with a cotton bud. Works well for me. Um, blowing into your cartridges is a no-no. Don't, don't do that because your warm breath will just corrode them more. It will blow off detritus that is stuck on them, but not good long-term. Stop doing that. All right. Thanks for joining me. Uh, like and subscribe. Bye.